So we're going to have a look at now uh, Newton's second law. We're going to look at dynamics. Now, this is something that's in on the Padlet. There's a mechanics essentials page. So this is just a good recap for some of these things that was from year 12. Newton's second law is basically F equals MA. And it says an object will accelerate if there is an overall resultant force on the object. The acceleration is proportional to this force and is inversely proportional to its mass, basically. F equals MA, where F is the resultant force, M is the mass, and A is the acceleration. Obviously, the mass has to be in kilograms, and the acceleration will be in meters per second, and the force, resultant force will be in newtons. The annoying thing about the, the F here is it is the resultant force. Sometimes people just think it's the force, but it's the resultant force, and we'll see what that means in a second. It says the resultant force is found by finding the difference between the forces in one direction and the forces in the opposing direction this tells you the overall force in one direction. It's kind of thinking about it a bit like a tug of war. So with this diagram that I've got up here, we've got this two kilogram thing that is resting on a table. Um, obviously, we've got its weight going downwards. We've got its normal reaction going upwards. We've got something pulling it to the right with 45 newtons. We've got two things pulling it to the left. Maybe we've got a, a resistance of five. Maybe we've got someone pulling it with a 10. So overall, the resultant force is like if it were a tug of war, which side would be winning and by how much. So obviously this side is going to be winning because 45 is bigger than the, the 15. And overall, it is 30 bigger on this side because you do 45 minus 10 minus 5. What I just wrote up here is that it's clearly going to accelerate to the right as there is an imbalance of forces. So not equilibrium means there'll be acceleration. So for this one, we're going to work out the acceleration of this particle. When we use F equals MA, we don't do F and work it out and then do something separate. We do the whole thing in one place. We just say F equals MA. So we say the resultant force is 45 minus 10 minus 5. You do it from one direction minus the opposite direction equals the mass, which is 2, times the acceleration. You write it in one single line. I don't want you doing it in a different way. F equals MA, find out F, find out M, find out A. Work that out, and we get that A is 15. So it's going to accelerate at 15 meters per second squared to the right. And I said here, notice how we find the resultant force by doing the forces to the right minus the forces to the left. So we'll just do this from a quick bit of year, um, year 12 recap. It says here, in each situation, the forces acting on the body cause it to accelerate as shown in the diagram. Find the value of A. So this first one that I've got here is going to accelerate downwards. So obviously, the 2G has to be bigger than the 8 because it's making it go downwards. And if it was like a, a war, a tug of war between those two forces, that one is going to be bigger. So using F equals MA, and I'm going to resolve it in the downwards direction with F equals MA, the resultant force is 2G minus 8. The force is downwards minus the force is going upwards, which equals the mass times the acceleration. So to work it out, I'll just do 2G <coughs> minus 8 and I will divide it by 2. How much was that, sorry? 5.8. Which is 5.8 meters per second squared, OK? <coughs> What's the only thing that's going to be different about this question? Can you spot what will be different about this question to the previous one? It's going up, so I'm going to resolve it. The top one is bigger, so I'm going to resolve it in the upwards direction. I know this is going to be bigger now, so I'm going to say 100 minus 8g. That's my resultant force is equal to the mass times the acceleration. So I just do 100 minus 8 times 9.8 divided by 8, and you get that the acceleration is 2.7 meters per second squared. OK? Nothing, obviously nothing new, because this is just from year 12 content that you've got. But I've put some key words there that I think I need to explain to make sure that when I'm using them, you know what I'm saying. And when you're trying to tell me something, you should use these words. So resultant force is what I'm obviously talking about here, where I'm doing some forces minus some other forces. right? The word resolve, when I say resolve the forces, it means doing like 100 minus 8g. Or if I'm going to resolve in the downwards direction, I'm doing 2g minus 8. It actually means to kind of find out that resolve to find the resultant force. And we've got those same those ideas. F equals maf is the resultant force. And the direction of the force corresponds to a positive or negative value. Okay.
we're obviously going to now add in some of these diagonal kind of forces that we've got here, okay? I'm going to just do the first one, and then you've got a few of these to try. Um, can I just quickly point out, it didn't print properly. This one is meant to be a 6, not a 60. I changed it, but this box I had in the wrong place, so that's why it, it went wrong. Um, so this one, the third one, is supposed to be a 6, and there's supposed to be an arrow on the end of it. It came up like this on my on the flip chart correctly, but it, it moved around and it didn't print. I blocked off one of the numbers. I made this worksheet years and years ago, and I always know that one is wrong. OK, so we've got this diagram at the top. I'm just going to do the first one, and then you've got three more to try. Um, so first thing we should notice here, I've indicated it's going to accelerate to the right, but it's pretty obvious it's going to accelerate to the right because there's some. it's an imbalance of forces. So I need to split this 10 up like this. Um, Ishtiak, what would this force running along the bottom be? What would be the size of that force? Not sure? No? Sadia? 10. Oh, wait, ten. Is it yeah, it's cos 30. Can you just quickly remind me why it's cos? It is cos. Because it's Okotoa? Because it's adjacent to the angle and cos goes with adjacent. So this one would be what, Ishtiak? Yeah, this one would be the 10 sine 30, OK? So then when you do your new diagram, this time our new diagram will have R going upwards. It will have 10 sine 30 going upwards. It will have 10 cos 30 going to the right. And downwards, it has 2G. Now, I can't remember who this was. I can't remember if it was in this class or the other class. But someone said to me, oh, the value of R is just the weight. The value of R is just the weight. But the value of, but it can't be. Yeah, so here we know that in the upwards and downwards direction, is it in equilibrium? Yes. Yes. Upwards and downwards, the forces up should be equal to the forces going down here. Because it's not accelerating upwards, it's just moving left and right. Okay, so left and right will be F equals MA up and down, the forces will be equal to each other. So we're going to try and find out the value of R and the value of A. So if I resolve in the up and down direction, I can see that R plus 10 sine 30 must be equal to 2G. So R is equal to 2G minus 10 sine 30, which is 14.6. Why is R smaller than 2G? 2G is 19.6. Why is the normal reaction smaller? I'm trying to explain it using like, the, like a real life explanation. Why is the normal reaction less than the weight? Uh, Sufian? Because it's pulling it up a bit. OK, so if you think about that in a sort of, um, in a practical kind of way. Imagine that you were like, when you're sat on your seat now, and, but imagine you're like a little kid, and you know when like someone would kind of like pick you up a little bit from the seat. But you're still sat on the seat, but you're kind of like being lifted up a little bit from the seat. It feels like you've got less kind of pressure from the seat on your backside, okay? You're still on the seat, but you feel less of a reaction from the seat because there's an additional force that's pulling you upwards. So the normal reaction is less, OK? The normal reaction is not the weight. The normal reaction is whatever the force is that will balance those things out. What were you going to say, Ismail? I was going to say because of the force that's pulling it upwards. Because of the force that's pulling it upwards. And th sometimes R can be bigger than the weight. In what context would R be bigger than the weight? It's going uh, down. If there was a force that was going like down into it as well. If there was a force that was going down into it as well. Okay, so that was that first bit of just finding out the size of the normal reaction. We're now going to find out, we're going to use F equals MA, and I'm going to do it in that direction. So I've got just 10 cos 30. There's nothing to subtract from it is equal to the mass. The mass we can't obviously see. But, oh, it does say up there, 2 kilograms, which is equal to 2A. So the acceleration is 10 cos 30 divided by 2, which is, and we're going to get that as a decimal, 4.33 metres per second squared. OK? So you've got three of them to try here. Make sure you've changed that one from 60 to 6. You need to find out the value of R and the value of A for those ones that you've got there. OK? And then I think, actually, after that, you've got some other ones here as well that you can try and find out what happens next with those, okay?
same things for those. This is in your booklet. Yeah. 